Hi, welcome back to the channel. You join us today in a lonely corner of the Western Thows. We'll be doing four Wainwrights today, including the most Western of all of the Wainwrights, Grike. And looking at the route today, it looked like it was going to be kind of wet and muddy trudge fest. So I thought, why not just embrace that and do it as a run? And I'm joined by Ryan and Cam today. So Ryan has done quite a bit of running before. He's done an ultra in the Thows as well. And he's currently training to do the Bob Graham, which is 66 miles across. I think it's 42 of the highest Thows in the Lake District, all within 24 hours. And then we've got Cam, who is our working bred Springer Spaniel. He naturally runs everywhere. So this is very much within his comfort zone. And even our running pace is really quite slow for him. So it is important that we always keep well within his comfort zone. So he won't be doing any kind of marathons or ultras or anything like that. But today he's just pootling about in the fowls and he absolutely loves that. I'm new to running really. I've done a few lowlands of canny cross runs with Cam in the past, just to kind of mix things up a little bit for him. And then I've also done a few fail runs, but this will be the longest that I've run. This will be clocking in at around 12-ish miles. So I'm just looking forward to just seeing how I get on today. I guess let's get going. I've always struggled with energy. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue a long time ago now well over a decade, and later endometriosis, a chronic inflammatory disease. That was the reason I left my job in the outdoors. I spent two and a half years barely leaving the house, and this is how I started working remotely. Although I did recover from chronic fatigue, I think I've always placed a mental cap on my energy, especially when I feel trapped in a cycle of pain. So running has never really appealed to me, until now, and I've been feeling a little energetic for the first time in a long time, and it's kind of novel. I have a bit of energy to burn, and it feels so freeing to just run. So this is my new canny cross set up for him for running. The intention with canny cross, I think, is normally that the dog will run ahead and pull and create a little bit of momentum. I don't actually really want Cam to pull, especially when we're doing longer days. You know, I don't need him to kind of put in that much exertion, but he settles into this quite nicely and it just means that I'm hands-free. So it has this harness, which is a little bit different from a climbing harness, which would attach higher up at the waist, whereas this sits lower, so it kind of utilises the sort of strongest part of your body. And you can also get it without the leg loops as well, that just adds a little bit extra. And then you've got a really strong bungee there, so if he stops to sniff or something like that, it just means that there isn't that kind of tension there in the line. So that I find works really well. So his harness, the main thing with any dog harness really, whether you're hiking or just everyday walks, is that it's a Y shape. You can see that here, and that means that it sits high above the shoulders. So you've got full range, oh, good boy, full range of movement in the shoulder, whereas some of the dog harnesses go straight across the chest, and then that impedes the natural gait, and that can cause joint problems over time. So it's just making sure that it's nice and comfortable for him to run in, and he seems to... Uh, seems to get on all right with it.
Although these fells look barren, the landscape of Ennerdale has been changing over the last 20 years. While the area still produces timber, the non-native conifers are being felled and replaced with native species, such as Scots Pine, Cecil Oak, Rowan, Juniper and Aspen. The Wild Ennerdale Project received National Nature Reserve status in 2022, protecting 3,000 hectares of water, forests and mountains. This varied habitat supports some of our most unique and precious wildlife, including red squirrels, the freshwater pearl mussels that dwell in the river and can live for a hundred years, and the Arctic char, a fish that survive only in a handful of places in the UK, at the bottom of deep cold lakes where they've been trapped since the Ice Age. just got the short and sharp section to get up Corfell and then we'll be retracing our steps that'll be the third wing right of the day and then we'll be coming back down here and tracing the path back down through onto the fourth wing right we've had perfect conditions it did say it was going to be minus six feels like temperature but with the sun coming out now some blue sky about it's really warmed things up and the ground is actually perfect for running at the moment slightly frozen enough to take the edge off the mud without it being you know hard ground that you might slip over so really good uh, route as well for doing a run so yeah going well Tail. Yeah, waggy tail as ever. He always just finds it easy, doesn't he? Yeah, Remember that walk we did where I was pretty much falling asleep in the car. I could barely stay awake in yeah. the car on the way there. I got out of the car, went round to the boot to get my rucksack out, and just walking the length of the car, I just felt absolutely exhausted. Yeah. And still did the walk, got it done, but it just, you know, it takes some of the enjoyment out of it. So I'm feeling good at the moment. I'm not feeling that good. fatigue I have in the past. There are sadly a number of downed aircraft in the Lake District, their remnants left on the fowls in the memory of the fallen. This one took us by surprise, having chosen a contour off Iron Crag, little more than a sheep trod. Canadian flying officer Robert Gordon Starling was 26 years old when he crashed his sabre during a cross-country training flight 
on Friday the 26th of June, 1959. It was reported that there was a thick mist covering the hills that day, and having cleared the larger fells to the northeast, he descended through the cloud to get a fix on his location, presumably assuming he was clear of the hills. It took two days for the search party to find his crash site, and he was buried at the Brookwood Cemetery in Surrey, considered a site of national significance by historic England. That was a big push up there, wasn't it? Keep breathing. That's the key. Breathe. Oh. I like feeling going up that one. Well done. Really well done. So that's our fourth Wainwright. We are at ten and a half miles at this point, so it's going to be about twelve, twelve and a half to uh, kind of get down and back that way. Really beautiful views from up here. I think it's easy sometimes to write off some of these smaller, less dramatic fells. It's not rocky up here, but it's still got plenty of features, I think, and really quite beautiful views um, with some dramatic cliffs over that way. It's been a really good day. Legs have held up, uh, lungs have held up, and heart has held up, so I <laughs> can't really ask for more. As we hit 12 and a half miles, we still had a little way to go. Had I set out today to take part in a flat road run, I probably would have felt a little daunted. Although fell running is technically more challenging, it felt comfortable because I'm so used to walking the fells. It's funny at the mind games we play. By the time we reached the car, it was 13 and a half miles, 22 kilometers, and I had completed my first accidental half marathon and felt like I could just keep going. As Ryan is always trying to tell me, you are more capable than you imagine. So I guess sometimes all it takes is just getting out of your own way. So it's a few days later and I was expecting my legs to feel a little bit sore or a little bit heavy, but I felt absolutely fine. So that's been really good, but I still think it's worth, you know, just taking that time to have some recovery days. And it's something that I've always done with Cam. If he goes out on a bigger run or a hike, then I always make sure that he has some decompression days following that. And if you didn't know, I have a dog business. So my whole business is kind of centered around giving your dog enrichment and kind of balancing out that physical activity with kind of mental stimulation so scent games brain games and such although he is a high energy breed I don't want to be over exerting him day in day out just to tire him out as that can cause joint problems later down the line and can also lead to something called hyperarousal where the dog is on a bit of an adrenaline high every day and especially with spaniels as they already have that kind of excitable exuberant personality then you know taking that time to do decompression just sort of helps them have a bit of a calmer baseline so the day after our run he just slept and quality sleep is the most vital component then we had a couple days of calming activities like scatter feeding and using his snuffle ball and just having some slow sniffy time if you have a dog and you want to learn more about that side of things, I'll put my info up so that you can find me over there. I'm always happy to talk about dogs. So 
as ever thanks so much for watching and I really do mean it when I say thanks because every time I get to make one of these videos you know from the filming to the editing I just love it so much so I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch these if you want to support the channel then please do like this video and leave me a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already and you can also hit the bell icon and then you should get a notification when the next video goes up if you have a dog or if you're buying a gift for someone who has a dog then please do check out my store I do ship worldwide and all of that really helps to go back into having the time to put into these videos until next time enjoy your adventures and I'll see you back out in the fells very soon